Hello everybody and welcome to Apollo Applications Program. We're starting off midway through 1973 with the launch of Apollo 18. Our mission is to go to Copernicus Crater. A beautiful launch right here, coming out very lovely, with no clouds in sight as we fly up through Cape Canaveral, by past Cape Canaveral. Look how beautiful this is. Anyways, um, as the ascent happens, which is rather boring, um, I can talk to you a bit about how this series is going to go. Um, this series is going to be fairly long actually, it'll reach all the way until Apollo 40, uh, as you can see here, just stage separation, and well, it's going to have a bunch of really cool missions in store for us later in the series, inspired off real NASA missions, and I've already roadmapped the entire thing, so I'm ready to record the whole thing. Anyway, to this episode, Really, we're going to be doing two missions, Apollo 18 and Apollo 19. But as you can see here, just a lovely view of the um, upper stage of the Saturn V flying across Africa and into the ocean. How beautiful. Anyways, in a second, we will um, begin our, we'll begin our TLI. And, well, I can keep talking to you a bit about the series. Um, the series is, of course, set in Kerbal-scale real solar system, um, with a whole host of mods, um, which make the game much more realistic, while still keeping it very Kerbal. Anyways, you can see here the TLI burn has started, with no failures so far. That's right, I do actually have test light, um, and... So I have a very realistic experience of all these um, engines and parts like this, while still keeping the non-RSS look of everything. Anyways, we just calmly fly up, and you can see a beautiful view of the Earth from here. Um, I'm playing in 2.5 times scale KSRSS um, because that's basically the scale that BDB, which is the mod that adds the parts, is designed to operate for. Um, anyways, we're just we're gonna grab the lunar module, and well, here we are, slowing down at the moon. How beautiful! And we're detaching the lunar module. Honestly, I have to say this first mission is fairly uneventful nothing much really happens. It's Apollo 19 that I really, that really is interesting. But I'm using some nice little cinematic effects here as like a TV camera as the engine ignited. How beautiful. You can see, you can see Copernicus on the horizon. Um, anyways, um, yeah, I'm very excited for this episode. For this whole series, it'll probably have an, a total of around 18 episodes where we'll be doing a bunch of really fun stuff. But anyways, at this point, we have Touchdown. And yeah, I did clip this a bit, only because my I had to like reload a save because the game like spazzed out. I've, I've got no clue why, but this didn't happen in the mission after this. Anyways, we can see here Gordon Kerman going outside and planting our EVA flag. And, well, after this, I set up a bunch of science experiments here outside the um, lunar module. You can just see a little pan around view of them. How beautiful they are in the little solar array. But the lunar ascent stage detaches and flies up, ready to rendezvous with the command module. Um, here, lovely shot of it flying into the horizon. Um, honestly, the whole mission was fairly simple, this one. It's, it's a very easy mission to fly, really. But here we are as we go for our home burn. 
And yes, I, you might have even seen, I have Ullage thrusters. I have made the game as realistic to Blue Dog Design Bureau as I can. Well, as R, as R, R O, like, as I can, without really making it actually R O, um, because R O is a bit too hard um, for me, at least. And well, we do a lovely re-entry here. Nothing, and the whole mission, as I said, was fairly uneventful. And we splash down in the Pacific Ocean near to the Hawaii Islands. Of course, I've got some. I've got the beautiful Volumetrics 4 mod um, by Blackrack here, making our descent absolutely lovely. And you can see the sun shining in the sky. How great! Um, yes. So the whole mission is pretty cool, and everything that happens here is going to be pretty fun. Um, and yeah, back to Ullage thrusters. I actually do need them, whilst in North Sand and Blue Dog Design Bureau, you don't. And on to the second mission of this episode, Apollo 19. As you can see here, the, all the systems are going, the launch clamps are going down as we get ready to launch. This time, I was launch I launched into a polar orbit because I found that it would be best for our transfer. Our, our F1s ignite and we shoot away from the launch pad. How beautiful. Saturn V soars through the through the band of evening. We, we separate the stages, and our J2s ignite perfectly. These past two missions have not had a single engine failure, which is great. As we push on up into the clouds, up into the sky, we can really see the lights of Florida below us, and the, and the clouds push on with the, with the second stage. Stage separation is confirmed, and the upper stage ignites, pushing us our final way into a polar orbit of exactly 89 by 89 kilometers. We slowly fly over the equator, watching huge band of clouds over the Pacific Ocean. We get ready for, for, and well, we point to our maneuver node, ready for translunar injection. And well, it happens, just like that. The Apollo module is sent flying into the cosmos, ready for what's to come next. I'll be editing these videos just like this from now on, where I, instead of adding commentary to just sped up gameplay, I'll be adding commentary to a cinematic mission. Um, I inspired this really off N9 and Beardy Penguins, um, N N9 and Beardy Penguins for all Kerbal Kind, and yeah, you'll see a lot of similarities to those in, in these missions that are coming. My channel wasn't based off Beardy Penguin enough already. Our knowledge thrusters fire and our main engine ignites, sending us into a 17 by 17 or kilometer orbit of the moon, perfectly passing over Shackleton Crater. Sorry, um, passing over Copernicus Crater, which would have been great last mission because I needed to wait quite a while, almost four days last mission. Anyways, the lunar descent engine fires, and we are on our way down to, at this point I've already spoiled it, to, to Shackleton Crater. Um, yes, and of course that is where I'll be building my future lunar base. Here we are, having just getting a bit more vertical altitude, and I'm now going to show you actually where the base is going to be. We're going to see it in a second. 
the crater in front of me, pretty much, just before that little ridge. It's the crater. The ridge that we're about to fly over in a second. Yep, right now. And, well, we come to a landing actually inside Shackleton Crater, because, of course, we do need to check for the possibility of water ice. Jebediah K. Kerman walks down the ladder, <clears throat> and, well, he gets ready to activate, and he gets ready to put down another flag. The site of, well, this mission. We didn't bring any science experiments with us this time, but this is more than enough for cool data. The lunar jetpack flyer fires, which we tested in Apollo 17, um, the lunar jetpack is fired, and we fly over to the other edge, of, uh, the e other edge of Shackleton Crater. This is the area where the sun hasn't touched the ground for billions of years, allowing for ice deposits. And well, slowly, slowly, the lunar jetpack brings us to a standstill. Jebediah takes, puts back his his um, RCS and decides to walk. This time, though, being very careful as the ice makes him slip if he doesn't walk carefully. Um, in fact, it's in fact it seems to be difficult to move. Surface samples collected, though, he jumps into a nice ascent and flies back towards the lunar lander and after the lunar lander comes into view he slowly slowly lowers himself down to the surface The lunar, the ascent stage fires, shooting Jebediah, K. Kerman, and Bob C. Kerman up into the sky, ready to rendezvous back with the with the main command module. And here we got a beautiful view of us flying oh, precisely over the South Pole, with a lovely view of Earth in the background. How truly perfect! And slowly, slowly, we come in to dock with the command module. And we fire our engine, shooting back towards Earth. A beautiful view of us flying away from the moon here. How lovely it is, sitting there in the sky. The astronauts contemplate how lovely it is to have such a beautiful way to access the cosmos. The command module, of course, separates, and we are ready to re-engage descent. A slightly more rough descent, though, from the last time. We went for a slightly lower periapsis, and we nearly overheated the command module. Um, but luckily, it didn't happen. Very hot here, as you can see, and the G-forces really make it a very uncomfortable ride for our Kerbals. We'll make sure to have a periapsis of at least 40 kilometers in future. And as we fly over the Persian Gulf, ready to land somewhere near southern, near the tip of southern Africa, next to an island, as you can see in the distance on the horizon right there, um, the crew is ready to get home. The parachutes deploy, and we have splashdown. See you next week. <laughs>